Hello everybody, you're watching New Egg TV. My name's Steve, and today I'm going to unbox this behemoth from Gigabyte. This is the Water Force. It's three GTX 980s, each with their own all-in-one cooling loop. It's pretty crazy, and comes in a suitcase. So, you do have that suitcase, and it's going to carry those three graphics cards wherever you want to take them. If you don't want to leave them home, or if you want to travel somewhere to a LAN, and you just have to put them in the absolute most secure thing you can, you can take this. So the suitcase itself actually has a couple different things that are nice. I'm not going to cover too much on the suitcase because it's really more about what's inside of it. Uh, but you do have a couple of tumbler locks here that allows you to uh, obviously lock this baby up and keep it safe, as well as two different handle points that you can carry it from. Casters on the bottom, four of them total, and you have a couple of these clips that are keep this thing nice and uh, flattened shut. Also, it's sort of a hard plastic shell. It's going to be pretty secure. And you also have a handle here that slides out one and then a second position. All right, enough about the suitcase. Let's open it up. You can see everything is, is packed quite nicely on the inside, very snugly. We have lots of, lots of styrofoam inside holding things where they should be. I'm going to start over here where all the paperwork is first. And I'm going to unzip it. Let's start grabbing some of the things inside. So we have an installation guide here giving you the contents of the trunk, which I'm going to go over with you guys, as well as the installation, installation instructions on uh, everything on the inside as well, how you'd be attaching them to your chassis and uh, the requirements there for it. So put that on the side. We also have keys, which fell out as soon as I opened them. Obviously for the suitcase, keep this thing nice and, and locked tight. Uh, we also have some hardware that's going to be used to attach a five and a quarter bay tray uh, in at the top. Actually, I can show you exactly what it looks like uh, right here. So that's going to be used to attach that in case you don't have any of those fine threaded screws. Uh, we also have uh, the actual software that you're going to need as well as the drivers itself. In fact, I, I recommend just going to Gigabyte's website and picking up the newest software uh, that will allow you to uh, start using this and monitoring um, the actual pump as well as the RPM and everything else. But more on that in just a moment. We also have a quick guide on how to install the graphics cards. Uh, warranty notice, there is a three-year warranty on this product uh, here from Gigabyte, as well as a please read this first, warnings on what you need to do, how you need to install things, like certain things like this, the very first one. Install the unit on a level surface, free surface free of vibration, and don't uh, tilt it or lay down the unit on its side while in use. You're going to be pumping air probably instead of liquid if you were to do something like that. Also, don't place any objects on the water cooling box. Uh, or block the air ducts. That's, that's pretty clear and sensical advice for anybody who's going to be working with this. Make sure that the USB and power cables are properly connected so that you can use Gigabyte's OC Guru 2 uh, installed before use. And if the GPU temperature remains over 75 degrees Celsius while the pumps and fans are running at full speed, immediately turn off the PC and contact Gigabyte support in order to find out what's happening. Also, if you find any leak, too, turn off the system immediately and contact Gigabyte. All right, so aside from that, let's keep moving. We also have this mesh area here where all that paperwork was, uh, in, was already zipped in tight along with these little clasps. I'm going to go ahead and throw that off to the edge and remove some of this foam so we can get to a few of the cards here. So we can see we have two of the GTX 980s here. I'm going to try and unwrap one just so I can show you what it looks like. I'll have a closer look at it here in just a moment. I just want to take a look myself, actually, because I haven't actually opened this yet. So here's one of the units, and you can see it's, it's actually quite beautiful. Um, I like this. Black PCB uh, screws so that you can remove it, although I, I, I don't know why you would do that now. You already have an all-in-one cooling unit here, but you actually could if you still wanted to. Uh, it's, still, it's still length, uh, the width is still about uh, two uh, card thickness, as, as you would expect. Although something different here you may have noticed from Maxwell cards, usually it's two six-pin uh, peg power connectors. Uh, here it's two eight, and that's important because you need to make sure that these cards have plenty of juice uh, to make sure that they're going to handle any kind of overclock or any boost clock frequency that it jumps up to. I'm sure there's probably some other reasons in there that I'm missing. Also, the, the, the cooling solution here, I'm just going to rip off some of the plastic, covers over the, the memory as well as the GPU uh, and the MOSFETs, so it's going to give it nice cooling all the way around it. Looks like they're using heat pipes uh, around towards the outside here uh, where the memory would be as well as uh, copper, uh, copper also as part of the block where the actual water circulates through here. 
I gave myself a second there to rebag everything back up again and start pulling it back out. So you can see the, the plastic hoses that are here holding the liquid and it runs all the way down to the 120 millimeter radiator here. You can see, and there are three of these. And starting on the other side of the briefcase, or the suitcase, I should say, are a couple different straps I have to remove to give us access to the parts underneath. We'll start with the SLI bridge here first. Uh, here's the SLI bridge that Gigabyte is providing. Of course, it's three-way SLI. I'm going to keep that in frame a little bit. Uh, it, is, it is for the three-way SLI, obviously, because you only have three cards in here. Also, it's PCB-based, so nice and sturdy. And I bet this probably glows or lights up. We'll find out more when I actually get it installed and operating. Uh, then they also provide for us like two, four, six, six different, um, uh, these, are, these are basically clips that are used, or water clamps I guess it is, that are used to clamp down the hoses themselves so that you can keep them nice and uh, secure inside the chassis of, of your choosing to install it. Uh, then they're also providing for you a VGA jack. Um, and you'll be able to use this. I shouldn't say that of your choosing to, by the way, because I'm sure that there are some limitations of which types of chassis to use. In fact, there probably are. I'll get back to you about which one that would work. I'm guessing it's, <laughs> I'm guessing it's the Gigabyte one, if I had to take a wild guess. Uh, so then we also have these uh, small arms here on the actual VGA jack that's going to hold up the graphics card, keep it nice and steady, uh, as well as it being able to be adjustable. And this just compresses. It's like a little shock. So. That'll keep it nice in place. I'm actually not going to use it on the build uh, that, that I plan on using it in, just because it's our test bench. And the N1D frame probably wouldn't be happy uh, having a bar just jammed inside of it like that. <laughs> so let me see if I can get this out. All right, so this is the actual uh, water cooling box, is what uh, Gigabyte's calling it. It's basically a large metal uh, adaptive part of your case you're going to add to the very top. And essentially, it's just going to house the radiator, the three radiators, as well as the three fans. I'll show you the fans in just a moment. We also have the monitoring section where it has a small LCD here uh, that will show you each one of the video cards, temperatures, fan in RPM, as well as their pump RPM speeds. And down at the bottom, we also have a few different uh, selectors that will allow us to select the different fan speed, the different pump speeds, as well as the temperatures that you're looking to have and, uh, and allow this to interact with it. So let me just turn it on its side here, and then open this bad boy up so you can look at it. To open it up, we see on the inside where the three different 120 millimeter fans reside, as well as the three different positions where the radiators will rest. And we also have, for connectivity with OC Guru, we have a USB header here to connect into your system, as well as the four pin Molex connector to give us power for this device. And hidden underneath this hardware, we have the last of the three GTX 980s. As promised, here's a closer look at the actual card itself. GTX 980 with some, I don't know, a couple, a couple changes here. Uh, obviously, it being water-cooled, so it's going to have that water block we looked at earlier. Uh, you can see some of the copper, the copper there uh, uh, trying to dissipate some of the heat. And it looks like some uh, uh, heat pipes here also dissipating heat over to that main copper plate, which is then being cooled by the liquid here on underneath this nice black metal uh, sheath. And it's got, you know, uh, a bit of, a bit of uh, holes in order to allow air and also for you to be able to see it because it's actually gorgeous. Uh, this is the number three card, not that it really matters, uh, but for the sake of this being an installation, maybe you're not familiar with how you should be installing certain things, it kind of keeps things straight, at least for the sake of the instructions. Now, of course, they do provide for you some some uh, uh, hose here to actually obviously bring the liquid into the radiator and it looks like the tubing is about 48 inches in length or 116 centimeters. And here is the radiator itself, 120 millimeter radiator. It's an inch thick here as you can see and it looks like there's a, there's a little fill tab here but obviously voids the warranty if you try to crack that open. Uh, a couple of screws here in order to keep the nozzles in place. Uh, allowing it to probably be maintenance at some point, but probably not by you, probably by Gigabyte. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you the back of the card, in case you didn't get a good look at that. It was, of course, that, that brown or chocolate PCB. It's also small little rubber grommets here, probably giving it a bit of spacing uh, be between the cards. And uh, let's see if I can flip it around here and show you the power delivery. We have, once again, two 8-pin peg connectors going straight in, as well as the two 
SLI fingers right here, which we're going to need to remove these plastic plugs in order to get access to those. Uh, flipping around here, we also have the uh, input, or the, excuse me, the outputs. These are kind of special. Something I should mention, uh, because if you guys are familiar with, uh, with Maxwell, it's not going to be able to output to, what is this, six different outputs. It can only output to up to four at a time. Specifically, these three will always be usable. Uh, but these two, the DVI, um, D, that's the digital only DVI output, and these two display port uh, outs, these two are going to trade off. So if you're using one of these two, this isn't going to work. If you use this one, these two aren't going to work. But the way that it works is basically uh, Gigabyte's designed uh, using flex display, which basically allows you it to automatically detect which of the two outputs that you're using and use those. The only time it would be a problem if you're using two DVI plugs here, or two, two DVI cables here, and one display port in here, then, then one of these two are not going to work, uh, depending on which one you plugged in first, I'm guessing, um, if the system was on, I suppose. And then these three, obviously, we're looking at the DVI-I, which is going to carry the analog signal as well. So if you needed to plug it into a VGA cable, please, God, tell me you're not going to do that. But if you could, or if you had to, you could actually plug in that adapter here and run VGA out over the DVI-I. Then we have another display port out, as well as HDMI. So let's talk a little bit about the actual clocked speeds. Base clock of a standard uh, GTX 980 is 1126 uh, megahertz. This one's up to another 102 megahertz up to 1228. The boost clock up from 1216, another 113 megahertz for a total of 1329. Uh, it's gonna have the same exact memory clock. Once again, three year warranty. And uh, some one final, I don't, I don't wanna call it a caveat, but one final reminder. Uh, that you're going to need to provide a 1200 watt power supply in order to get this to work and obviously uh, at least two, four, six, six different eight pin um, peg connectors to provide power for these cards. And one final thing that is down here at the bottom, of course it's using PCI Express uh, Gen 3 as the bus support that you're going to need to use in order to connect this card to your motherboard at home. And well, look at that. Underneath the third video card, seems I forgot about the five and a quarter bay tray that they provided. Uh, in order to hide kind of the, the cables or accept them into the chassis of the actual one of, of whatever ends up working for this <laughs> once again. So basically it would fit in your chassis just like the picture on the front of the box. All right, let's turn this bad boy on. Oh, there we go. Gigabyte lighting up there as you might expect. Not much light here, but that's because I want to try and show you the lighting effects as soon as they come on. There it is. It does light up on the little SLI bridge there. Very nice gigabyte. All right, of course, then we also have the cooling bridge here, a cooling box, I mean to say. And uh, there's a couple of different things. I'm going to need it to jump into Windows before we actually see OC Guru 2 kicking in and connecting to this thing. Uh, but give it a moment here, and we'll talk more about it. All right, so as I mentioned before, we have the three different buttons down here at the bottom, and we have all three of the VGA cards here uh, lined up with their temperatures, fan, and pump uh, information. So we can change some of that information here, or I should, I should say we can limit what it actually can or can't do based on the settings here. So I'm going to hit the button here, and that's going to let me change either the fan or the pump controls here, which are these two buttons, allowing me to set the different fan speeds. So you can hear it's, it's pretty quiet right now. I can ramp it all the way up to 3,000, or I can bring it all the way back down to 1,000. And then I'll let that zero out. And we'll jump over to the fan. Nope. I can select each one individually, too, I believe. Let me just try that again. One. Yep, there we go. VGA1, VGA2, and VGA3. So you could specify uh, specific fan settings for each one. And if I jump over to the pump here, I can turn the knob and and actually change the pump RPM. Ends at uh, 1500 or uh, starting at 1200, goes all the way up to 1500 RPM. I'll leave it back up to 1500. Uh, but one of the uh, best things you can switch is the mode for temperature control. And here I can specify uh, all the way down to 30C and the, pan, the fans will run until we actually hit 30C or as close as possible. And then if I hit it again to show you the upper echelon, here, go back again to, nope, nope, there we go. I go back to target temperature, I can bring it all the way up to 65 uh, degrees Celsius. And it does say in the instructions if it hits 75 degrees 
uh, over, uh, you know, with everything running full blast and it doesn't get it down below, um, back down below 75 degrees, then you definitely need to shut it off and contact uh, Gigabyte. All right, so for my benchmarks, I actually ran it at uh, 30 degrees Celsius, or I, I set it to run as close to 30 degrees as it could get. Um, and in order to do that, it actually runs up pretty loud with the fans. So I'm going to put it on a load and let you guys hear exactly what it sounds like uh, when it has to do that. About 65 decibels is what we're getting at full blast, which is 320 millimeter fans at 3000 RPM. All right, so finally I can talk to you about which chassis you should be using with this uh, water box. Now, uh, I don't have exact information from Gigabyte, but I did do some measurements so I can at least give you a clue as to what you should be using. Uh, if I get more information from Gigabyte uh, when I launch the video, we'll definitely add it. Uh, until then, right now, the one specific thing they've made very clear is this must be on a level surface. So if you have a chassis that sort of slopes or it has vents on top and it can't sit uh, perfectly flat on top of the chassis that you're using, uh, this uh, probably won't work for you. You're probably going to have to look at another, another chassis to use. Um, now, in terms of the width, there's actually two small arms here, which is probably difficult to see, but one here and one here. And basically, they can expand to a certain width. Now that width starts at 7.75 inches or 196 millimeters and it goes as far as 9.5 inches or 241 millimeters. And as far as the depth is concerned, you can basically put this on a chassis, it, it, it just has to be a minimum of 19 inches or 482 millimeters. Um, essentially the really, really the only limiting factor here is the hose length. Um, because if you had a super tall um, tower, full tower, then it may or may not stretch, just depends. I haven't done any measurements on that. Uh, but that's the information I have in terms of what I've measured and what I can, I can try to help you with in terms of the size chassis you should be using with this. All right, so let's talk liquid cooling for a second. Uh, there's a couple different benefits you're probably going to be aware of if you're not already aware. Uh, one, it's typically more silent, or at least a little bit more quiet than standard air cooling. It's also going to run a little bit cooler, and for that reason, give it a little bit more performance than most air coolers out there. Now, it depends on which loop you're running and what you're going to do with it, because you clearly could do your own custom loop on three different 980s. And now, according to my buddy Lee over at PC Junkie Mods, you actually might save a little bit of money doing it that way, but it's also a lot more complex. Now, uh, if you were to go with the Water Force, you're getting the benefit of a warranty as well as a less complex installation. And on top of that, you're also not having to worry about any maintenance because as I mentioned before, it's an all-in-one loop. It's closed loop, so you don't have to worry about opening it up, draining all the liquid and replacing it. So that aside, take a look at the benchmarks and make up your own mind. <laughs> Those were the benchmarks. Uh, now moving along, I wanted to mention a couple more things, and that is that uh, the total system power draw that this system was able to pull from the socket was 367 watts while it was in idle. And depending on what test I was running, uh, it varied, but I saw a maximum draw of 837 watts. 
Uh, now, new to the list of benchmarks, I'm sure you noticed, was 3D Mark's Firestrike Ultra. That is the 4K version or 4K resolution version of Firestrike. Nice to have that finally. Uh, as well as NVIDIA's DSR, Dynamic Super Resolution. Uh, now, that allows these cards to actually render software or, or scenes outside of the resolution of the native resolution, I should say, of your monitor uh, in some multiple. So I started with a 1080p monitor and I used times four. Also, they have something called smoothness. I dropped that down to zero. What that does is uh, remove any kind of blurriness so that the image is as crisp as possible. It also runs the cards uh, as hard as possible as well. Um, I did that as a comparative to uh, from DSR 4K to standard 4K just to see what the, the overhead might be. And in fact, there isn't an overhead. It, it actually drops it down. It gives it, it gives it three FPS more than standard 4K, uh, which if you uh, looked, you probably noticed that as well. Uh, now, obviously, all of these numbers were better than stock 980s and three-way SLI. Uh, that was, that's excellent. In fact, I think it was something like 1,500 uh, points higher in 3D Mark 11 and something like a thousand or maybe 1200 points more in 3D Mark 11. Uh, more about those those uh, in a later video. But aside from that, I think that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. Uh, let me know in the description below if you're going custom loop, if you're going water force, or, or if you're going suitcase, I guess. Anyways, take care and we'll see you in the next one.